Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship. We're so grateful that you've come to worship with us today. We're thankful that we had this opportunity to join our hearts together, even if we're not able to be physically present with one another as we joined and as we praise our Lord. And so now I invite you to join with me for a moment of prayer. Oh, loving God, we thank you for this day for the opportunity that we have to come together as your people, to lift up our hearts before you, to lift our praise before you, and to ask that your spirit might come, strengthen us, renew us, and lead us into new ways of serving you. So come, precious Lord, be a part of our time together, and Lord, may your spirit wash over us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now I invite you as you're able, to stand and may we join together as we sing. listed in the email that brings the uh, address for this video to you and I pray that you will take each person and hold them on your heart as you go through this week pray for the church pray for yourselves pray for the nations of this world and for its leaders pray for those who are struggling who are affected or infected by the coronavirus the COVID-19 illness Pray for those who are searching for a vaccine and those who are seeking to provide healing care in our hospitals and at homes. Pray for our seniors. Pray for our children. Pray for yourselves. May God lead us all in a way that accomplishes God's purpose and God's will. And now I invite you to join with me for a moment of our pastoral prayer and our Lord's Prayer. May we pray. Loving God, we thank you, Father, for this day and for the opportunity that we have 
to come into your presence and to lift our hearts before you, asking, O oh Lord, that you will strengthen us, that you'll bring healing into our lives, and that you will help us through our times of struggle. Father, there are many needs in our congregation and needs beyond our congregation, needs for your presence, for your Holy Spirit to come, to touch, to renew, and to strengthen. And we pray, Lord, for the transformation of this world, that we might be uh, realigned with your purposes and to let go of this idea that we know better. Precious and loving God, we ask, Father, that each person who is struggling with the virus may receive the touch of healing upon their bodies, their spirits, and their souls. Lord, be with those who are finding vaccines and working to develop palliative care for them. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will, will bring your healing into all of our lives. May we be renewed and strengthened after your purpose and after your will. We pray for the nations of our world, Lord, and for the leaders of each nation, that each may be guided in your way. By your Spirit, help them to be aware of the <laughs> the precious uh, part that they have of caring for your people. And Lord, may they be guided so as to accomplish your purposes for their nations and for themselves. And precious Lord, we pray that your spirit may wash over us now. May we be renewed and strengthened. May we find help, hope, and healing for the brokenness that is in our lives. And we pray, Father, also that you will hear our prayers as we make all of our prayers in the name of Jesus. For it is in his name that we pray. And as he taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to remember those who are a part of our community. This is meet and greet time. And since we are not able to join together in person, I invite you to reach out to meet and greet those who are a part of our congregation with uh, a phone call, with a note, a text, an email, however works best for you. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Send them a bit of, of good news this day. Let them know that there's someone out there who's praying for them and caring about them. And I ask that you also remember your neighbors. I invited you last week to find a way to reach out, and I hope you have, to let them know that the neighbor who lives next to them in peace is seeking their, their best interest in, in your heart every day. And so I pray that uh, you will continue to reach out and to touch them as well. Meet them with the love of Christ. Greet them with his peace. Please remember your church and its mission and ministry with your tithes, gifts, and offerings. There will be information at the end of this video on how you may make your donations and send them to this church. For those who pay attention to the seasons, they will know that 
the, the church has just moved out of one season and into the next. We've moved beyond the season of Lent, Easter, and Pentecost, and now enter into a season that is commonly referred to as ordinary time. Well, it's not ordinary in the sense of, well, here we go, another Sunday and nothing special. It's not that kind of ordinary. Ordinary comes from the word ordinal because we count the number of Sundays that follow Pentecost. We are in the second Sunday following Pentecost and we will continue through these ordinary days until we get down to Christ the King Sunday just before Advent in late November. And so there, these days are, are, are assigned a color of green and that green stands for the growing that we are expected to do in the ministry and in the life of Christ that has come upon us. We, uh, we seek to grow week by week. And so the lessons that we receive are those designed to help us to grow, to get um, stronger in our faith, to reach out uh, and, and to be made, um, better servants, better disciples for this world. And so I invite you now as we enter into this, the second Sunday following Pentecost, for this today's lesson and its help for us. We are reading from the Gospel of Matthew. We're in the ninth chapter, reading from verses 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Hear these words. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, Teaching in their college, <laughs> teaching in their synagogues, uh, to congregations. I almost made a slip there, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, "The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few." Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray. Lord, we thank you for your instructions and we pray, Father, that it will find a place within us and help us as we go about your business. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. And may all of God's people say, Amen. When we look upon these words, we see in them a pattern. Jesus had a pattern for his ministry. He went about teaching. He went about proclaiming the good news. He went healing, curing, relieving those of suffering, helping everyone. And as he went about, he sought in all of this to, to make people aware of the love of God. Well, in order to accomplish this and know that it would continue through the seasons, he called to himself apostles. Twelve are named in our days in this day's text. And for these apostles, he had specific information. He wanted them to see first what he was doing. They watched his pattern. 
They were aware of the things that he did and how he did it. And so he, giving them this information, asked them to take this information and make it a part of their lives. He set a pattern for them. He gave them guidelines and then he asked them to try it out. Patterns are very useful for anyone who has attempted to create something from materials. Um, you'll know that uh, you have to have something that guides your actions. If you're creating um, a house, you have to cut the lumber in the right lengths. You have to nail it at the right angles. You have to put it together in such a way that the pieces accomplish the final design. If you're sewing a dress, you have to cut it out according to a pattern so that the pieces blend together to form one seamless garment. Well, it's not seamless in that, but I mean, it's something that looks like it was meant to go together. And using a pattern means that you save time, you save materials, and you accomplish the purpose that you set out to accomplish. Patterns are very useful. They also have the side effect of relieving stress. If you are, if you are working and you have not followed the pattern and you have cut out something or you have sawn a board without measuring twice, saw once, um, you find sometimes that it doesn't fit. That causes stress because now you have to do it again. And doing it again means that you're going to use up some of the time that you had set aside to accomplish it in good time, trying to keep up, trying to catch up. And when you are trying to go faster like that, well, many times it means that you're going to have the potential for making more mistakes. And that is never a good thing because when you start making more mistakes, the best thing you can do is just quit. You gotta sit down and say, Whew, I need to take a break. When you've got a timeline though, well, that just adds a little bit more stress. Patterns therefore can be very useful for helping us. Jesus knows the value of a pattern. As we've said, he, uh, he recognized the pattern that his father had set for his life and so following that pattern, he went about doing what he needed to do. But that pattern he knew would be that which he would give to his apostles, those who would be the ones to carry the message forward. Setting that pattern, he, he helped them to understand how their lives would accomplish the same that his life accomplished. But to help them and to give them a good start so that they wouldn't become discouraged if something didn't work right, he gave them some parameters. He added the parameters of, first, go only to the towns of the children of Israel. Go to the Jews, your brothers and sisters. They're the people who already have a knowledge of God. They're the ones who likely uh, grew up with a worship of God occurring in the synagogues around them. And therefore, they would not be uh, uh, unaware of God's, uh, God's purpose for their lives and God's saving action down through history. Next thing he said was, um, I do what I've done. But last thing he said was, do it without the expectation of payment. You receive this, uh, this gift of healing, of proclaiming good news, and you received it without, without charge. You're to go into the world and give it to others without charge as well. And what we see from their actions and from what we see from, from the effect that has come all the way down to today is that that pattern has been a good one. This continues to be the pattern for today. We have a uh, responsibility still to proclaim good news. We still have the responsibility to give healing, to bring about curing of diseases, uh, to relieve people of stress and suffering, to help them. The, the disciples were given that uh, ability to, to cast out demons, to raise, to raise the dead and bring them back to life. We see these things occasionally in our journeys, 
but many times there are great droughts between those who are uh, strong um, in the proclaiming business and those who are strong as healers, those who seek and give uh, curing to those who are broken, those who are, who are very ill. And when we have that drought and it lasts for so long, we find ourselves crying out to God, Oh God, we need, we need you. We need the help that a healer can bring. We need the help that a proclaimer can bring. And when, when we cry out, when we ask God to give these, these things to us, we expect that God is going to respond. We do it with some expectation that God is going to accomplish God's purpose in and around us, sometimes even through our lives. And that's where we come to today. You see, because like the apostles, Jesus has called us to be the people who go into the world. We are to proclaim good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of God is at hand. When we see these, when uh, things having power, well then we're encouraged. We go about then adding the uh, help that people need, the healing that people need and offering and securing the hope that people need. When we offer these things and give them to others, we can see that the work that God gave his children to do, he gave through Jesus to the apostles, is still capable of being accomplished today. It works through us. We are the ones now given that responsibility. And as we stand and as we share and as we give God the glory, this world is transformed. It's made better. It's renewed and strengthened according to God's will and God's purposes. And when it's strengthened and brought back to the purpose that God created it to fulfill, when it, when it accomplishes God's will, well, this world and the people in it give praise, give glory to God. And that accomplishes the other part of our lives. We give glory to God. You may not have realized it, that God was actually preparing you for this journey. We talk about ordinary days, days spent teaching us how Jesus would have us to live. And when we look at these ordinary days, when we see them for what they are, well then we begin to recognize that they're not ordinary at all. What they are instead is helpful days that give us guidelines, that set patterns for our lives, that set a, a journey before us of accomplishing God's purpose for this world and for us. The people around us are struggling these days. There's no doubt about it that this is a tough time. And we are looking for someone who can come in and relieve us, relieve our anxiety, give us the healing that we need, help us in our struggles, and restore hope to the people. When we, when we look for uh, someone to come in and to do this for us, maybe what we're, what we're not paying attention to is the little voice that comes inside of us and says, here, reach out to this person. Here, remember them in prayer. Here, send them a card, a note. Call them on the phone. Here, bring over a sack of groceries. Here, call them and uh, let them know that you're praying for them. When we offer these bits of, of restoration because they restore us into a, a right relationship not only with each other but with God. When we experience these taking place in our lives, well, now we're aware that God is bringing about that very help, hope, and healing that we've been praying for. We may not realize it, but we're the ones that God has given us that responsibility to do. He's given it to us to accomplish it because we are the hands and feet of Christ. We are the church. We are the body. When we, when we do it, when we accomplish God's purposes by our gifts of, of God's love and mercy to others, well, 
then we accomplish the God's uh, God's purpose for for uh, setting us here. And so that's what today's lesson comes down to. We are given an opportunity to be His help, His hope, and His healing into this world. And so now I want to encourage you to take the lessons you've learned, to take the good news that's been preached to you, and to go to the world and give it away. Help others to know the love of God. Tell them that God desires their healing. God desires to help them. And then when they can open themselves to receive that, help them to know that this gives hope to all the world. And so, be strong. Oh, uh, you got to be courageous too. This I know is the benediction, but I mean it well for this part here because you've got to be steadfast in your faith in order to be an apostle. When we accomplish these things, God is glorified. And God's purposes are fulfilled. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And now I invite you to stand as you are able, and may we join together as we sing.
And so, be strong. Be courageous in your faith. Let all that you do be done in love. Amen.